And we are now joined by uh, Toronto Blue Jays general manager, Ross Atkins, on the line right now. Hey, Ross, thanks for doing this. Hey, Ben. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Good so, to be with you guys. Yeah, uh, we appreciate you taking the time for us. Uh, how would you assess your, your team's first half of the season? Yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of good progress from our young core, which we've talked a lot about. We've talked a lot about how excited we are to integrate and infuse a lot of young talent into uh, into the major league environment. And a lot of those transitions have gone exceptionally well, especially on the position player side. Uh, having Vladdy here, Kevin Biggio, Lourdes Coriel's progress, uh, just to mention a few, Danny Jansen has really started to look like a, a, an above-average player, not just a contributing major league player in the recent weeks. Uh, there, there's a, a lot of good players coming still, and obviously we're we're never satisfied when we're not in the playoff hunt, and that's uh, that's disappointing. Uh, you know, having said that, there's a a lot of good, so many good things happening that uh, there's a very good feeling throughout the organization that good things are to come. Yeah, it doesn't feel like there are too many things that have been bigger than the progression of Lourdes Goriel Jr., who's absolutely been raking. And we've been talking about him a lot over the last couple of days. What do you think it's been like for him since being called up? What what has been discovered by him? What has been the message from the organization that has worked? Well, I think you know every every player's transition to the highest level of talent, whether that can be in any sport, uh, is different, and it's rarely seamless. It's rarely uh, that someone just arrives and they're the best player they can possibly be and never look back. Uh, so you know, I think. You know, some of it for, for Lourdes has been adjusting to stadiums, ballparks, different pitchers, and an entirely different landscape. Uh, some of it has been his continued growth and maturity as a professional athlete. Uh, I think him moving out to the outfield where you can just see his exuberance and confidence has helped his overall confidence, which uh, we're human beings, and that bleeds into his confidence and his ability to feel strong at the plate. So, uh, you know, I think it's a number of things. And what we've continued to focus on is uh, it did, at different points in his career, uh, I think it started initially with just introducing him to professional baseball, and then there was a, more of a focus on durability and just getting his strength uh, to a point where we felt like he could carry the workload. And then then defensive adjustments that he's had to make. And I, I think versatility is still there for Lourdes. I think he can come back onto the dirt at some point and be a versatile player, but he is clearly a talented left fielder, loves being out there, enjoys it. You can see just how much fun he has playing the position. So uh, re really encouraging. So it's the All-Star break, and so all eyes are on the Blue Jays' representative, Marcus Stroman. And I think... The main topic of conversation around Stroman from fans has been whether or not the possibility of an extension has even been discussed with you and his camp. And has that happened? Have there been any conversations or any points where you've reached out to Stroman's camp and discussed the possibility of an extension? And if not, why is that? So, you know, this is the, you know, the, un unfortunately, because of the nature of negotiations, we can't talk about uh, the, the details of them. We can't confirm, deny. We can't. It is such a slippery slope. Once we go down there, not only does it compromise any business that could potentially get done, it becomes a distraction for the player. And the player, uh, out of respect for how hard it is to, to play, we, we stay away from negotiating publicly. Um, now, having said that, we've already negotiated arbitration deals with his agent one time going to, or we, you know, attempted to negotiate and end up in hearings. And when you're having those discussions, you're talking about more than just, um, you know, the, the concept of one year. So uh, there, there's always discussions about potential extensions with, with any player going into arbitration and an arbitration process and what that could look like. But as it relates to any specific individual, I'm not going to, to comment further that said there is a feeling about him like he's said it publicly the feeling that he doesn't seem to be wanted why why is that 
I, can you say that again? You just, the question the, the sentiment, the feeling to be wanted? Yeah, this, the sentiment from him publicly has been that he doesn't feel wanted by the organization. Uh, and why do you think that is? Well, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's something to further talk with, with Marcus about. Marcus has been incredible for this organization, and he clearly is. I mean, I, you know, his feelings I can't comment on, but what I can tell you is that what he's done for this organization and for this team has been exceptional. We think the world of him, and I know he's going to continue to do great things. Hey, Ross, Ben Nicholson-Smith here. I, I'm wondering, when you look back at, at last winter, there was so much talk around Aaron Sanchez and Marcus Stroman almost almost in tandem with each other. And really, ever since they've been in the major leagues, there has been that kind of link between these guys as, as the Blue Jays have gotten really good and then gone into a, a bit of a tougher time. I, I'm wondering, in the last couple months, as Sanchez has struggled, has the likelihood of a trade involving Sanchez diminished in, in, just as he has worked through some things on the big league field for you guys? Um, I mean, again, like it's similar, right? For me to talk about a player's value in the industry is, is something that is, is I can't, I just can't do But Um, you know, what I can tell you is that Aaron Sanchez is extremely talented. The stuff is there. He has, uh, you know, electric fastball at times with the ability to spin it, a feel for a changeup, exceptionally athletic. He's been very durable this year. And the, and the biggest difference has just been command. The walks have, have hurt him. He's had guys in running and in, in scoring position when ground balls have found holes and and balls have gotten into gaps. And he hasn't he hasn't given up a ton of home runs. It's really not the power. It's really just walks that have hurt him. Talking to Ross Atkins here. So obviously the, the conversation surrounding Marcus Stroman and his potential uh, no longer being with this Toronto Blue Jays team is because he's only under team control for one more year. And the window of contention for this team is uh, presumably beyond uh, just next season. But we've already seen some incredible gains from some of the young players in the first half of the season. Of course, it's a small sample size for all of those guys. Is there anything that could happen in the in the second half of this season that could impact your decision as to how close this team might be for uh, to contending for a playoff spot going forward. I mean, every every anything that happens for an organization, is, is, of course, time is what <laughs> what happens, and as as different performances occur and uh, different goals happen, there you know, of course things could. Um, will change on a monthly basis as to uh, how we start to strategize moving forward. Having said that, the reason that we're in this position is to learn, to learn, uh, you know, what these transitions are going to be for young players. And one of the very difficult decisions that we had to make was not being as aggressive in short-term acquisitions or in free agency because and we knew that would be tough. We knew that would be that the risk of that would mean if some of these transitions didn't go exceptionally well and we weren't healthy with the acquisitions that we did have, that we could be in a position where the win loss record was uh, less than ideal. And you know that did occur. Having said that, we have successfully transitioned a number of position players that we're extremely excited about. And now we have a triple-A rotation of Ryan Barucki, Sean Lee Foley, TJ Zoic, um, Jacob Wagaspak, other players coming into that fold and an, excited, an exciting double-A rotation that once we start to bring those players into uh, the major league um, uh, environment, that's when we'll really have a much better idea about our competitiveness. So, uh, again, I guess in short, it's, feeling good about where our position player depth is and our ability to complement that and where we needed to learn more and where, uh, you know, specific to your question, something that could speed that up would be those young pitchers that I mentioned transitioning smoother and, and quicker than maybe expected. Okay. So I guess the, the roundabout way, the, the way I phrased that question and the answer I was expecting is that, you know what, it's hard to look through this organization and the, the pitching that's in the farm system and, and believing that, yeah, that's on the same sort of trajectory as the offense, that if you're evaluating a, a quicker transition to contention, it would only be with the offense and then maybe you would supplement the pitching in some other way in the offseason. What you're telling me is that this team will only be ready for contention when the young arms are at the same level as the offense. 
No, I mean, no, it's, I, I don't think it's ever black and white. I, you know, I don't think it's ever, it's just as simple as that. Um, I, I just think that our position player group has transitioned slightly ahead of the pitching and we are so excited about the guys that are coming. And when that happens and when that occurs, it, it's not years away, it's months away. So, you know, and, and different for all of them, different for Patrick Murphy and Nate Pearson than it is for Sean Reed Foley and Ryan Barucki. Uh, Nate Pearson and Patrick Murphy are two of the more exciting arms I've ever been around. I mean, they're both throwing 100 miles an hour with plus breaking pitches and weapons to start and, and get tons of swing and miss. So, um, you know, it, it, it's, I, don't, you know, I don't think there's an executive in baseball that would tell you when that is all going to come together and transition on a hard timeline. It's just we're exceptionally encouraged by the amount of depth that we have and how it has transitioned thus far. Ross, you mentioned Nate Pearson. If, as you look ahead to his second half after a really strong first half showing, what are the next steps for him? Would AAA be a next challenge that you guys would, would consider for him? And are the major leagues a possibility for, for Pearson in 2019? Yeah, Nate's been awesome, man. He's, you know, un- unfortunately one year ago had the injury or now a year and a half ago uh, and missed the entire season. So we've tried to expedite his development because the talent is so uh, exceptional, really. So, uh, you know, I, I think AAA is clearly in sight because we get now the, the limits are off where he's going to be pitching more regular five and six and seven inning outings. Um, if he is successful for another round of outings in, in double A, I'm sure we'll be talking about triple A. And as it relates to the major leagues with, you know, someone who, um, you know, doesn't need to be protected and is going to be on somewhat of a limited workload uh, to bring someone to the major leagues for a limited period is not always the best idea for the long-term health and strategy of just, not just the player, but for the entire organization. And when it comes to Bo Bichette, the timeline that we're working with, does it feel sooner than later? What else do you need to see from that player in, in AAA? Yeah, I mean, so with Bo, as I've, I've said a lot, you know, he's <clears throat> he's been awesome, man. It's such a good story. The guy just wakes up and thinks about how he can be better every day, and he continues to do that handled every challenge the way you'd want to see any athlete do so and just embraces it, embraces it and gets better at everything he does on a regular basis. So, you know, he hasn't had a ton of AAA playing time. We want to make sure that when he comes here, he's playing every day and we feel like he has the best chance to be, uh, or he has a very good chance to be uh, an everyday shortstop. So, that everyday playing time in AAA at shortstop is extremely valuable, and, and we'll see. You know, I, you know whether it's uh, sooner or later is hard to define that, uh, but, it, you know, we are talking about it on a regular basis on how we could best transition him to that next challenge. Hey, uh, Ross, we uh, really appreciate you taking the time for us. Uh, thanks for answer, a- answering uh, some of our questions. Appreciate it. Thanks. Okay. All right, guys. Anytime. Talk thanks, to you Ross. soon. There's uh, Ross Atkins. Toronto Blue Jays general manager. Some interesting stuff coming out of there.